just a little housekeeping thing. You can live tweet this. Uh, just, uh, yeah, no audio or no video or pictures. Audio is great, though. Um, so, yeah, I work at Xbox, and I'm also the workshop coordinator for Geek Girl Con, which is a conference in Seattle. Um, hopefully, some of you will be there. Um, and the motivation for my work with both Xbox and with Geek Girl Con is I do have privilege and, you know, I acknowledge that, but I feel like I, I have some space to elevate um, voices of diversity and um, I would encourage you to reach out to either me or the convention if that's something that interests you. Um, so I've been living with anxiety and imposter syndrome for as long as I can remember, even before I got into tech. Um, sorry, I think it's a little too quick. Um, there was a long stretch of time where I didn't understand my feelings and I didn't know how to talk about them and uh, let alone address them. And having my life affected by it and support from those great close to me greatly impacted my decision to deal with it. In my mind, a big part of uh, getting to good mental health is um, knowing that you're not alone and trusting that and correcting or collecting tools for your wellness toolbox. Uh, apologies, I forgot to do the trigger warnings for this talk. So um, they are anxiety, therapy, unconscious bias, and verbal abuse. Sorry about that. Continue. Thanks. Um, it took me a long time to understand and trust that work is just as much about learning as it is knowing. Um, in a world like tech, things are constantly changing, and it's easy to, to feel like you don't know what you're doing. Um, working on the cutting edge, um, nobody knows what they're doing. So. Um, you're not alone in that either. And I hope in sharing this talk that maybe you can feel less alone and get a different perspective about your own anxiety um, or what people with anxiety can experience. So I kind of love this. Um, it's a pretty old drawing of uh, one of the first illusions. Um, some people see a duck. Some people see a rabbit. Um, some people only see one. Some people see both. Um, in 1899, an American psychologist devised this as a test, um, but also to make a point that uh, perception is not only what one sees, but also a mental activity. So that we're all on the same page, what is perception? Perception is a way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something, a mental impression. Anxiety and imposter syndrome take on a specific perception of self in our relationship with the world. Anxiety is a host, has a host of effects on the body, but also it affects us mentally and our mood. Um, people with anxiety often feel worry, overwhelmed, depressed. I worry I'm not making the right decisions, and the feelings are so persistent that I in turn feel overwhelmed and depressed. It affects everyday abilities, and anxiety affected my ability to communicate and gave me a bad feeling even before I would go into work where I wouldn't even want to go. Um, and it also affected my ability to go out and do things that I wanted to do. Imposter syndrome is the inability to, inability to internalize uh, achievements and the constant fear of being found out as a fraud. It's not uncommon to think thoughts like, I'm lucky to be here, or I need to do even better next time. That was terrible. I don't deserve that praise. For me, it was constantly chasing that moving target. How do you think all of that impacts your feelings? It impacts the way you see the world and the dialogue you have with yourself. One of my favorite challenges to inter internal dialogue is this quote. If someone talked to you the way that you talk to yourself, would you be friends with yourself? While talking to yourself is pretty common, how we do makes a big difference. Researchers studying the thinking patterns of people with depression and anxiety um, find that self-talk towards, tends towards frequently and relentless form of destructive self-talk. 
So what's a different way to look at the challenges of feeling like we aren't good enough? Mindfulness is not new, but these are the specific worries I experienced, what I came to learn and continue to be mindful of. First of all, forget everyone else. Remember that you aren't, remember that people aren't thinking about you as much as you think they are. A lot of that can be explained by cognitive bias, where a lack of rationality giving us a false sense of understanding of people in situations. For example, if I've only ever watched Friends, I may assume that I know what it's like to live in New York and reject the idea that most people don't live in lavish apartments with tons of space. The spotlight effect, a term coined by two professors, uh, can help explain poster syndrome. One is false consensus. Uh, overestimating the extent to which other people share our opinions, attitudes, and behavior. Anchoring effect is overestimating the extent to which our anxiety is obvious to others. And the illusion transparency, which is our tendency to overestimate the degree to which our personal mental state is known by others. So if nobody knows how I feel, should I share? Share your experience in a way that you are comfortable with either as a part of support for or from a community. The Anxiety and Depression Association of America reports more than 13 million reported US cases of anxiety per year. You're definitely not alone. Anxiety disorders are highly treatable, but only like one third of people actually seek help. When I started talking about my anxiety, I started to see ways for me to work towards good mental health. You need some new inner dialogue. You're awesome, you were hired for a reason. Turning your I never do enough into I am constantly challenging myself to be better. And if you don't think you're doing well, challenge yourself to be specific. What exactly are you not doing enough of? And define how what fraudulent behavior you actually have. Constructive con criticism can actually help you and make you a standout employee. I still have issues with reviews at work, trusting that and what people say about me, um, and even just giving advice to people about career stuff. Um, yeah, am I, am I qualified to do that? Am I just faking it? is definitely something that I still struggle with. It took some time to trust that, but it was important that I did. Walking around thinking, oh my God, they're gonna fire me, is not a pleasant way to spend your day. Personally, I use the simple, you're doing it. You're actually doing it. You're out there in tech, doing the work. You have a spot. So at different times during the year, this test that was devised, um, by the American psychologist um, yielded different answers. So in the spring, people would see rabbits, um, and towards the fall, it was more common to see ducks. Changing my perception was one of the tools that helped me begin to work on my inner dialogue. And talking to people who feel the same way I do reminds me that I'm not alone. And also talking with people who don't feel the same way I do is a great way to get a reality check. Getting a different perspective and having a person to communicate with is important. In a field where there are long hours, stress, ambiguity, and sometimes isolation, allow yourself the time to prioritize good mental health. Thank you.